What's good, y'all? So, Tekken has been getting a lot of flack lately. I have no idea why. Well, I take that back. I understand on some of the reasons uh, people are talking about, especially those who uh been grinding hard to get to the best ranks, and then they play someone and they disconnect and mess up that person's uh route to ranking up, which is very... That's very dirtbag. It's like, if you're going to lose, just lose with some honor, bro. Let that person rank up. They beat you. It's over. But sometimes you can be talking to the wall saying that. But, yeah, it's just you're a dirtbag, bro, leaving the game in the middle of this person trying to rank up because you don't want them to rank up on you. Like, that's just wrong. But I know that has been an issue because those with dashboard, their game, the one who was winning, their game messes up and all that other stuff. But I heard there's other issues that I don't know about. Maximilian has a title called... Tekken 8's biggest problem. So I don't even know if that's the what he's going to talk about or not, but I'm interested in seeing what else he talks about considering he's been playing the game more than I have. I've been on the Grand Blue uh, Ryzen lately. I've been playing Street Fighter and uh, Mortal Kombat off, street, like, um, off camera and stuff just by myself. But recording-wise for y'all, I've been playing a lot of Grand Blue. I got to get back into the flow of Tekken. Y'all know I love fighting games. So it's kind of hard to balance all of them at the same time, but I've been enjoying watching Tekken 8. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying it a lot. So I want to see what his uh, take on the biggest problem is. Shout out to Maximilian Dude. Please subscribe to him if you like fighting games. All right. I'm already going to like the video. I'm a huge fan of his work. The thing that's the most frustrating in Tekken, you'll run into somebody where it's like, oh, they're essentially executing the flow chart and you break it or you get close to breaking it, right? You get really close to breaking it. The frustrating ass part of Tekken is that you essentially see through their bullshit and you wonder, will they do anything to respond to it? And most of the time they won't, but sometimes you get close to breaking it and it's like, oh, I see what you're doing, but it already, it took three rounds. Yeah, right? it's it adjusting. took the first game to figure it out. And then what happens when you lose that they first leave. game? They quit. Yeah. You got close okay. to figuring out my bullshit. I don't have any answers beyond that. This I'm is out. very dirt, dirt baggage. And that shit, like, legit, that's, like, the whole point of a fighting game, bro. It's, like, a, a full admittance from the other player. Hey, I got this list of bullshit I do. It works pretty good. I, I execute said flowchart 2.0. If it doesn't work, I have no interest in changing that flowchart. I have no interest in adapting or doing anything different. It's too risky to fight you again because you might beat me. I'm out. That shit cuts me mad deep. The that's most being fun a coward. shit in fighting games is g getting close matches with people. It is the most fun shit. I hate stomping noobs, dude. I hate it. I, I want to get out of the lower ranks when I'm in when I'm playing Tekken so bad because I find it actually less fun. And stomping noobs doesn't give me any satisfaction. I know I know that's not the case for a lot of people, but yeah, I mean, dude, because you want if you if you're aiming to like, get damn, better, because I had someone tell me that it's like, why do you care about facing someone better than you? Because you'll never get better as a player if you just keep facing those you know you can beat. You know. Like Grand Blue, for example, I'm playing with every character because I just want to learn the roster. But every time I get into rank, one of the downfalls is that most of my rank matches, when I play with a new character, it goes back to the lower ranks. So I got to play care people that hasn't put a lot of time into the game. And it gives me more wins than it usually would if I was in the higher ranks. Because I think I'm like, I, I know I'm a good player, but I'm not amazing to where I should be on some crazy win streak or nothing like that. But that is one of the downfalls. Now, it is, if you think of it as a content creator, it is good because I'll have videos for y'all. But me personally, I don't care of showing my losses. That's why I do bounce from rank to casual because with playing new characters, the one benefit of playing casual matches is the fact you meet higher rank players. So I've met a lot of B, A, other just players that are ranked higher than me, that are more skilled than me, uh, playing casual matches. And that's why I bounce back and forth between that, because I do want to get better at the game. And I understand that if I stay with this certain route, which is the lower ranks, even though, like I said, it's not my fault I'm in lower ranks, it's just with the new character, that's what happens, which is good. You should, they game should do that. But I want to balance the fun and also learn. So, no, I understand where he's, where he's coming from. If you care about getting better, you want to face people that are your level or higher. This bitch just 3 0 me. All right. And then what happens in the next set against, like, really good players? You'll, you'll see this happen to me a lot because I don't have a lot of Tekken experience, but 
I'll see what they're doing. And what happens? You 3-0 them back. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's so what happens thing. now? Usually against these players that are actually have a lot of Tekken 7 experience, I get fucked up. And in the final set, it's like, yeah, they adapt back. and <laughs> Yeah, me up, that's how like, it works. That's satisfying. They're like, I'm oh, cool good job. You learned. Right. Now let me kick your butt. To me. They 3-0 I, they, they me. I 3-0 them. They 3-0 they me back. They 3-0 right I'm back, like, yeah. That's fucking Tekken, bro. But that's, that's good cool. though. That's Feels how you get better. Nice. But the fact that people in tech and ranked will just take that as an opportunity to, oh, I don't want to lose anymore. I'm out. That's dumb. Mm. Yeah. I feel like it's an inherent BM problem that I have not seen in and I, those fighting people need games to be, uh, outside of one specific series, by the, but the chat uh, will tell me another up. one. I'd like to effectively call this Tekken's BM problem, and it doesn't mean bowel movement. No, no, no. Uh, BMing in games is effectively like teabagging and acting like an asshole. It's bad manners. Taunting uh, after rounds is I've never heard of that in, before. In third Strike was the, the epitome of bad manners back in the day. I swear to God, I'm nine out of 10, where if a bitch taunts post-match in Third Strike, I'm gonna fuck you up now. <laughs> like, that's Dang. like the sign is like, mm, I'm gonna fuck you up now. Sorry, man. Tekken's never heard that side of BM Max in a while. To post round key charging. It's timeless. No, no, this is, BMing is timeless. All I'm saying is that the level of BM that I have experienced in online fighting games with 20 years of experience of playing online fighting games, there is only two titles that have as much BM as current Tekken 8, and the only other series is Mortal Kombat. Yeah, However, I about to say Mortal Kombat easily. There is another fighting game series. Oh, by the way, because I got speaking of Mortal Kombat, y'all, for those who are... I know a lot of y'all are not... With the whole toxic thing with fight with games, and I'm not either. I ain't for the toxic. I'm 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 used to it doing the playing video games for so long, but I have to let y'all know if you're playing Mortal Kombat, you have to have thick skin. You have to have thick skin. You can't let the tea baggers, the fatalities on the first match they win on the best out of three. You can't let it mess with you. If anything, let it motivate you to kick their butt. But if you lose and the set is over. It, you can be salty, but for you to say, I, I hope that Mortal Kombat gets to a stage where nobody's going to teabag and fatality. I, I'm not going to doubt. I'm not going to uh, put down your hope, but teabagging and fatalities and stuff is kind of the thing of Mortal Kombat. If you're playing that, yes, it's the characters, the the, the competition and stuff, but that side also has a lot of toxicity in there. It is. Mortal Kombat is, one, is the most toxic fighting game, in my opinion. So, if you don't like that, then play other games. Not that you won't experience it in other games, but you'll have it way less than Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat is, if it, if it had a list of things that it will it will have, toxic toxicity is going to be uh, the top three. You have good characters, depending on which one you play, good mechanics, and toxicity. It's just the way it is. You know, so... It can be annoying, because you just want to have fun, but... Unless you're playing with your friends or in a private lobby where it's not toxic. If you're online, that's what you're going to deal with. Not all the time, but a nice amount. I, in my opinion, Mortal Kombat is number one with that. It has equal, when it comes to fighting games. larger amounts of BM that sort of or like his permeate of BM, the game's bad entire bad online mode and makes it like aggressively difficult to play at times. And chat's already mentioning it. It's Smash Brothers. I haven't even played a lot of online Smash. Wait, I've really? Wait, let me make sure anyway. I heard him right. I've never played Smash Brothers. I played it for fun years ago, games. but not there like competitively. Only two titles that have as much BM as current Tekken 8, and the only other series is Mortal Kombat. However, I will fully acknowledge there is another fighting game series that has equal, if not larger amounts of BM that sort of like permeate the game's entire online mode and makes it like aggressively difficult to play at times. And chat's already mentioning it. It's Smash Brothers. I haven't even played a lot of That's online crazy. Smash. I would I've never barely thought. played any online Smash. I did not want to put up with it, right? But I was wow. like, are there any other games that are like this over the years when I talk about this this element to online fighting games where it's, it's just so hard to play this game? People are such shitheads. That's Smash, dude. It really is. Wow, People say I Smash never thought. friggin' sucks online. Not even just the net code, but the way people act. Smash friggin' sucks. I would have know? never it's thought. every game. I mean, I've, like wrong. I said, I've never like, played Smash like that. Smash for me was always you at a friend's house like when I was a teenager and we were just all having fun having chips and you know some pizza and just fooling around Smash was the game that was on but I never played it competitively online none like that so 
That's new to me. That's crazy. But actually, I take that back. Well, no, it's new to me, but I did react to a video a long time ago of seeing people raging playing Smash Brothers. And that did shock me because I'm like, dang, people take it that seriously. They're breaking stuff over Super Smash, but that's a big that's a big community and they take it very seriously. So I'm told uh someone told me this is the same rage as people who play uh what's that computer? League of Legends. And I've seen ra raging in League of Legends before. And I was like, then when I saw that video with Smash Brothers, I was like, yeah, that's crazy. I never would have thought, but the toxicity is big too. That's crazy. Excluding every I other never game from having that. BM in it, every game will have BM in it. It just feels like, at least from my experience, what is the common factor between Mortal Kombat, Smash, and Tekken, where it feels like these games have more general online BM than almost any other fighting game, I, fighting games that I have played online, yeah. the games with the largest casual audience. And you might think that like, oh, well, what about Street, Street Fighter? Fighter? The one fighting game to not have any casual content practically until Street Fighter VI? Uh, no, I, I think Street Fighter clearly is a big game, but it has had a tough time sort of like targeting casual that audiences. It sort of That's is relatively focused on like the hardcore audience, hardcore fighting game players for a very long time, you know? Up until Street Fighter VI, now it's actually grabbing a casual audience to a certain degree. So it's cool. Street Fighter's finally in a situation where they're offering enough content say, in the game to Street really Fighter pull Six, in new there's players. Some, and it's uh, working. Like, Street there. Fighter's popping off and relatively big in the States. Probably and more though, like you said, than it would have been right Street Fighter But if there's one thing that showed me over doing the re recent Tekken Legacy, how did Tekken get so big? Well, it didn't start until really Tekken 7. Competitive Tekken has been around for a very long time, but was it ever really big? Comparatively speaking, not as big as some of the other fighting games growing uh, growing up at that time. <laughs> Tekken is a series that has historically been completely carried by its casual audience. And when its casual audience did not bite, the series suffered as a result. Effectively, every single Tekken game since 3 has been, even before that, has been huge games full of a ton of content that really bring people to like, oh yeah, these, these folks are just going to play this game and check it out and have fun with it. And are they going to play online? They might play some. But there's so much content in the game that you don't even have to play fully online. A lot of that side of an audience of a fighting game, which is very much echoed in Mortal Kombat and, and Smash Brothers, that side of an audience that is looking for that experience isn't looking for <laughs> That was a nice move. Not looking <laughs> I heard to what he effectively was, get what he's better. saying, but I was watching that ending right there too. I want to go online too. and just get wins. I just want to get wins. That's Wait, all I what? want. I just want to get wins. Isn't looking for good games. Not looking to effectively get better. A fighting game which is very much echoed in Mortal Kombat and, and Smash Brothers. That side of an audience that is looking for that experience isn't looking for good games. Not looking to effectively get better. Their mentality is, I want to go online and just get wins. Yeah. I just want to yeah. get wins. That's all I want. And you can I tell what wins. kind of players those are online. You can really tell. Like, you'll play a set... Uh, uh, just not too long ago, I played this Geef on Street Fighter 6. I played this Geef on Street Fighter, and I won. It was 1-1. One, one, no, I'm sorry. I won a round, and he won a round, and he left. It was like, uh, you're, you're done? Then it was another one, and this was both of these are on Street Fighter. And uh, I won a set. And you know it was the best out of three. And this player wanted to say, I think it was, was it Jamie? They was using, I forgot the character. And the Jamie player, after they won the set, they just left. I was like, dang, y'all, it, it, is getting a win that serious? You got to finish the set. <laughs> like, you want you don't want to finish the set and get back? Like, this is a, it was a good match, too. But I guess the Jamie player was sweating so hard to just get one win. And it was like, I just got to win one. And then he just left. I was like, okay, uh. I would say GG, but you just ran away. And so I agree with him. So in Mortal Kombat, you see that a lot. Because of the toxicity of Mortal Kombat, it grew a lot of other players who just not care of getting better. I just got to get a win. I'll do whatever is necessary. I'll sit in with Reiko and just uh, spam the darts all day just to get a win. Then they'll do a fatality or teabag and make themselves feel good, I guess. I, you know, I don't know what, why that makes you feel good. Then you do a fatality and they just leave. It's like, one, you're not the better player. You, you just ran like a coward, and the other person, you know, you, you get it. If you play fighting games, you know what I'm saying. You got to finish what you started. <laughs> but when people just have the mindset, all I care about is winning, all I care about is winning, they lose the, the drive to get better, and they'll take whatever they can get. And that's a lot of the casual audience. There are some casual audience that just want to get better and finish what they started, but a lot are like that. So I see what he's saying.
Oh, and did I mention that Rako because it was out of experience? Yeah, it was in it was in the beginning of Mortal Kombat when I first started. This is before I knew what Rako can do, and I was trying. You know, now I know how to cancel that. But when the guy won, he teabagged, did a fake, I then ran away. I was like, because I was like, okay, I know what I need to do, and I didn't get the chance. So yes, for those who's about to say you did that, you say that sounds like from experience. You are absolutely right. <laughs> but thank God that was when the game first came out. I that that stuff don't work anymore. Granted, I don't blame these games or their audience for believing this, right? I don't blame them because number one, it's a video game, dude. Unlike somebody like myself or other content creators or people that are really into this shit, it isn't a lifestyle. It, yeah. it is a lifestyle to a very That's small get hurt cornered from people market who do that. of like, people it doesn't that hurt love me. fighting games but it isn't a lifestyle. It's something some that do. you just want to get some wins. I just want to go Yeah, some people, people do it just to get some confidence games, in themselves. That can be pretty hard, right? And which is why I typically tell people play fighting games when they're new. You have a better opportunity just to jump online and smash people and get some wins. Because if you wait longer and longer and longer, the lower ranks are just going to be full of more people that know how to play the game. And it's going to be more and more difficult to smash people. I think that's what's going on with Tekken 8 right now. It is doing very well. The game's got more content than it ever has. But its online experience echoes some other games that very much are casually accepted and have been that way for like 10, 20 years. Where it's like, yeah, these games just naturally bring in the casual audience. And are they looking for that experience? No, they just want to win. Yet these people that jump online, all they want to do is win. They don't want to learn anything. It's not just fighting games. There's a lot of games. I was talking that, about uh, where it's like, like that. And they're allowed to do shit. that. They you paid money for the game. Some rank. people just want it as a just <laughs> to know, feel good about you don't themselves. Even deserve to be above like a certain rank because the game is effectively allowing you to. You, you must. Wait, what? <laughs> it causes a lot. Of online, all they want to do is win. They don't want to learn anything, and that brings it back to what I was talking about, where it's like you piece of shit. You don't deserve to be at this rank. <laughs> mm. You know, you don't even deserve to be above like a certain rank because the game is effectively allowing you to. You, you motherfucker. <laughs> it causes a lot of frustration, don't get me wrong. And I think it needs to change, but I don't think we're gonna see a change anytime immediately soon because even a game like Mortal Kombat, I think the answer in Mortal Kombat situation was to do the quitality thing. And they've had quitalities since MKX. Yeah. Cute little way of acknowledging the fact that the other person's, person's a bitch for quitting out. We have That's added a good point. an entire mechanic to the game to give you reward if the bitch quits out. But here's the problem. It's very difficult for the game's engine to determine who quit. And even in Mortal Kombat situation, I'd hmm. have to go back and check, but based on how it has been in the past, both players get the quitality. But if one person actually quits out and kills the game, obviously they can't see their end of the quitality, right? They can't see it because they close the game. So even in a Mortal right. Kombat we situation, see it. it's Those were playing, but they don't. They just leave and start another match. Oh, who actually was the one to quit? Who do we give the points to? So this isn't an issue of just like, oh, just handle your rank system better. Just throw those players into a jail full of other players that are also quitting out come up with definitions as far as who is the shitball and throw them into another shitball pile with other shitballs. In fighting games, it can be very difficult on the back end to figure out who actually quit and was that quit logistically sound? Do they just have bad internet? Do, do people that have bad internet deserve to go to prison with other people? It yes. seems like there should be yes. an easy fix I'm, to this um, shit. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not even gonna say I'm sorry. If you go into a match knowing you have bad internet, you deserve to play with those type of players. I, I don't know how game companies would uh, even work with something like that. I really don't. But let's just say if they knew how. Yes. Yes. Because that's not fair to everybody else who actually uh, got, who has great internet, which is the majority of the player base of any game. It's not just fighting games, but just games in general. If you come into a lobby, but the fighting games is really more serious because it's about movement and timing. And if you have bad connection, it's going to mess up all that. But if you come in knowing, it's different if you didn't know. But if you know or you're like, yeah, if you know you have bad connection and you still join in. And I deal, especially playing games for a long time. Anybody, yeah, you deal with that a lot. Anybody who plays games, you deserve to be in a lobby with those kind of people. With that or people who quit all the time. Because if for someone who's going to be like, well, they pay for their game. Yeah. 
well, if you can pay for your game, can you pay for better internet? And if you can't, I'm not here to count your coins, but be considerate of, over everybody else. You are literally considering your own situation and will mess up everybody else's fun for it. You will mess it up. And that's fine for you. That's very selfish. It's like, come on, bro. Or so whoever's doing that. It's like, come on, really? No. And then us who, you know, are fine internet-wise, which is most of us, we have to suffer. And then we could lose a rank up. We could lose in general. Or you'll get a win and you'll start taunting, knowing good and well your connection saved you, not your skill. Because for those who play in bad connections a lot, they're used to it. That's why you like hear people like me or other players who play online. They're like, oh, he's used to his McDonald's connection. You know, that's, that's it's not fair. It's for everybody else. So, yes, if you have a bad connection and you know about it, until you're able to get a better connection. Because, I, like I said, I'm not here to count nobody's coins. I am not. That's not my job. But until you get that situation fixed, you should be over there playing with them. Or just play offline stuff until you get it fixed. Me, personally, there was a time in my life I couldn't afford good internet. There was. So what I do is I played offline, either offline games like story games or like fighting games. I'll be in the training gym until I can afford good internet. So that way when I get online, it's time to work. I would, I'd never put anybody in that position. And if I did, I would check my internet, get it fixed, my bad, and then get back online. But that's just, you got to have a considerate heart to do something like that. Like that's so, to answer his question, I'm going to say yes logistically sound do they just have bad internet do do people that have bad internet deserve to go to prison with other people yep. it seems like there should be an easy fix to this shit but the more i have like spoken with people about this problem over the years the more you realize that it's a bit more nuanced than just give me the fucking points dude just let me have the points just do something about it that information is not always logistically sound because fighting games are peer-to-peer -peer. it's crazy that even in big fighting games that are out now handling rage quitters as we're calling them today pluggers for some reason is still not completely I never heard that before, the systems pluggers. are weird and, and tekken is especially fucky right now and it definitely needs something right the fact that disconnect rate shows up is nice but it is ruining a little bit of the online experience for a, a lot of people just in general immediate things we wow. can fix sorry one, <laughs> that, that was a good match there but back to thousand percent needs to have a performance barometer before you jump online a thing that calculates if your computer is good enough to play the goddamn game online there needs to be a performance test and the fact that that doesn't exist is insane to me that's... it was in street fighter friggin four i was Tekken about to say that was i've seen that before in another game that's a great idea and that, that doesn't take long to do either. They could do... That would be great, bro. And if you don't have a good connection, uh, either they put you in the live with those who don't, or they just don't let you a lot of... They don't allow you to play at all. One of the two. That's a... I forgot about that. I've, I've seen that before in other games. Long. It doesn't take a ton of time. Game online. There needs to be a performance test. And the fact that that doesn't exist is insane to me. It was in Street Fighter Friggin' 4. Tekken sets are not long. It doesn't take a ton of time to go through a Tekken set. It's a, it's a high damaging game. It can go very fast. Even if it goes full rounds, full matches, you're not really there for more than 10 minutes. That's true. If it is a full, like, two out of three set. Lock us into two out of three. The fact that I people love two can out of three. see that my opponent has a chance to beat me, I'm leaving. I almost hate that more than plugging. I hate that shit, man. There needs to be solutions here. Wait, it what does he know? Like? the game, but full rounds full matches you're not really there for more than 10 minutes if it is a full like two out of three set lock us into two out of three the fact that people can see that my opponent has a chance to beat me i'm leaving i almost hate that more than plugging i hate that shit man there needs to be solutions here it doesn't completely ruin the game but it's making it a lot harder to enjoy somewhat of the the, the tech and ranked experience you know? good point good point and you know it's nothing i to go again at the devs for for any of these games because that's a it can be a tough order to deal with because like he said you don't know who's disconnecting and who's just uh sometimes games just shut off like it happens i played uh overwatch i played fifa i played other games and all of a sudden the whole game just shut off and i'm back to the xbox or a playstation me it's like what just happened so you know, you don't want the game to punish you for something that's not your fault. So that is a thing where companies have to, you know,
to try to figure that out. So I understand that. That's why, well, I'm used to this kind of stuff. It's annoying, the stuff that you see in these games, but I've kind of gotten used to it. I do get salty from some from time to time, but I understand. What helps me is I understand the issue that devs will have with that because they don't want to punish those who didn't do anything wrong, you know. So, you know, that's a tough order to deal with, but I see his point, and, you know, that is the biggest problem. So I understand what he's saying. Definitely, if you like fighting games, Maximilian Dude, you know, he's one of the GOATs on YouTube, on, on in general, YouTube, whatever, uh, social media. He's he's one of them. And respect to him. I learned a lot from watching him. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Just want to make sure I like the video. All right. But thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll check you later.